And here on Book TV on C-SPAN 2, we continue our coverage of Freedom Fest 2012 from Las Vegas, a libertarian gathering that's held annually out in this city. And we've been talking with several different authors. And we want to introduce you to another author right now, and it's Wendy McElroy, whose book is called The Art of Being Free, Politics Versus the Every Man and Woman. Indeed. Wendy McElroy, first of all, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm an individualist feminist. I am an individualist anarchist. I've been active in libertarianism for about 40 years now. Since I've been writing since I was 15 years old. This book is my reaction uh, to 9-11, basically. Uh, when 9-11 happened, I started to rethink everything about libertarianism and everything about um, my belief system. I, I wondered had I wasted my life uh, to work in freedom for the decades I have because I saw a police state arise so quickly after 9-11 and so effortlessly. Um, it seemed no one resisted it. It seemed that America gave up on freedom all at one moment. And I did a lot of thinking about my relationship to the state, what the state was, how important it was to my life, and how the main thing that responsibility of life, if you want, is what Henry David Thoreau used to call the business of living. And as a result, I wrote a book, The Art of Being Free, that gave the theory, the history, and the, the psychology, if you would, behind my response to that whole system of, of, of thinking after 9-11, where I basically am tired of dealing with freedom as an abstraction. I'm sick to death of debating the abstractions, and I'm not dissing or disrespecting anyone who wants to debate liberty. I just want to be free. I want to know how to be free in my own lifetime, especially given the, the rise of what I consider a police state. And what, what did you change in your thinking after 9-11? And what did you find about your previous thinking? Concrete examples. Okay, concrete examples. Um, one attitude toward the state, if you want, uh, was best expressed by David Friedman one time in a, in a speech where he said uh, there was an Italian saying that uh, if you translate it into English, went something al along the lines of, uh, it's raining again, pig of a government, uh, which is you, you blame everything on the state, you rail, and you, you talk and you, and, and you work against the state. On the other hand, I mentioned Henry David Thoreau, who was being pivotal in my thinking. He basically had the idea, not merely of the business of living, but he had the idea of, he went out and on a, one, at one time on, on in his, his essay on civil disobedience, he went onto a hill and he said, looked around himself, this, the absolute beauty <laughs> that surrounded him, and he said, here there is no state. I want to look inside myself and say, here there is no state. I try to do that increasingly every day by making sure I pursue um, everything from alternate currencies, inter interacting with my neighbors in terms of uh, alternate methods of exchange, privatize, privatizing my life, taking my life back from the state and privatizing it to the extent possible. Do not deal with the state. Do not interact with the state. Uh, make sure that there are, that that you make go into businesses that that are privatizing government services. Do not interact with the state. We are going to an unprecedented period of state control of our lives. All you have to say is no. And I'm not saying that you should say it and, and martyr yourself, martyr your family. I'm not saying anything like that. That would be reckless. What I'm saying is, to the extent possible privatize your own personal life. So does that mean you're living off the grid? Does that mean you're not flying on airplanes because of uh, TSA and all the different regulations? Are those the types of things that you're not doing anymore well, or is it something? I'm here, so I flew. <laughs> um, and I cannot tell anyone what to do in their lives. And I'm not trying to. What I'm saying is that to the extent you're po it's possible, use alternative currencies. 
use the gray market. Go um, private. Uh, do not use government. Uh, it, and this book, and I, I don't mean to misrepresent it because it is not, it is more theoretical, it is more historical, and the background and the underpinning of everything I'm saying. I'm actually writing another book right now that would, would be more the how to. The whole idea that people have to, this is basically psychologically preparing people for the fact that they are living in a police state. They are now, we are not coming to a police state, we are living in it. You must ask yourself a lot of questions and prepare yourself. How far are you willing to obey? What are you going to do if certain situations come up? The being free is no longer something that you can take for granted. It is something that you are going to have to develop the art of being. Who is Beatty Chadwick? Who is who? Beatty Chadwick. Beatty Chadwick is um, a man who, who was in jail for many, many years. Um, even though he had committed no crime, he had uh, been convicted of nothing. What it was, was it was, it was a, an imprisonment due to a civil contempt. There are many, many people are not aware of the, the complexities that have, that have developed in the American court system. In the American family court system, you, you go in and you are divorcing your wife. And your wife alleges, as if, if you're baby, <laughs> Your wife alleges that you have um, hidden assets. The judge says, yes, I think he does. Even though it's not proven, Beatty Chatwick went to jail for something like 10, 12 years because he, he basically refused to turn over records to a judge. That's civil contempt. He was, and, and the damnable thing is you can be imprisoned for far longer on a civil contempt uh, uh, charge than, uh, than a criminal one because civil contempt you don't have the right to appeal you don't have the right to have a judge uh, to have a, a lawyer you don't have any rights that are the due process rights that you would have in a criminal case so there are many situations in this in the system that people are unaware of that are creeping up on average people like you and me is it just the state that concerns you what about uh, in today's world, corporations, uh, when we do searches on the internet or we use credit cards and our, our behaviors are tracked, or use cell phones, and uh, all that information is out there. I, I'm, of course, concerned with, with uh, the ordinary citizen being a criminal, which is what you're talking about. If you're saying that I'm concerned with corporations, I have a very hard time drawing a line between the state and corporations. I don't think corporations as they exist today could exist unless they had uh, state privilege, unless they had limited liability, unless they had certification by the state, and many other, and, and when I say I, I, it sounds like I'm slamming big business, I'm not slamming big business. Business should get as big as it possibly can, you know, in a free market context, you know, let it, let it flourish, let it prosper. If you're asking about the privacy issue, yeah. Uh, of course, everyone will, will go after my data, because not, not mine in particular, like it, it's, it's particularly precious, but your data, my data, um, because they can make a book off it. And that's, as long as I have the ability to say no, as long as I have the ability to shut the door, uh, which the state does not let me do, but which I would have the ability to do in the free market, as long as I have the ability to do that, then it's up to me. The responsibility now devolves upon me to slam that door and says, my own goddamn business. <laughs> Wendy McElroy, why do you think the post office is harmful? Oh, the post office, well, well first of all, it's considered to be a, a benign institution, usually. It's, it's, it's the one that's thrown up, you know, like, at least they perform a service. Um, yeah, the service they have performed throughout the, the decades, it's from the very beginning in, in when it was established uh, after the Founding Fathers, was to censor. They censored the Federalists, uh, the, the Anti-Federalists were censored, the, uh, um, it, and in wartime, it's any government agency 
is going to serve a government purpose beyond the service that it purports to provide to the, per to the public. Any government agency is a government agency.